All right, welcome to the next session of Big Talk from Small Libraries. Um, uh, those of you who are with us this morning, this was supposed to be this morning, and due to my error, it was the we got time zones all messed up. Uh, so um, we are doing it now. So thank you so much for uh, agreeing to come in this afternoon. So we are going to hear from Page Public Library of the 2023 uh, Best Small Library in America from a uh, li library journal. Um, this is a uh, award that has been done for a long time. 2005 or so was the first one. And we have usually always had the Big Talk, or the Best Small Library in America um, award winner on, on um, Big Talk from Small Libraries. But when the pandemic started in 2020, they stopped doing the award. So we haven't had anyone for quite a few years, for a few years, but they brought it back last year. Thank, um, yay. And so um, we have Debbie and Sarah who are gonna talk about um, their library. Um, who is the most recent winner and congratulations to you for winning. Yay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. So um, my name is Sierra Combest. I'm the children's coordinator here at Page Public Library. I have been here for just about three years. Prior to this, I was a preschool teacher um, for three years and I got my degree in elementary education. Uh, first, I just want to thank you guys for giving me this opportunity to present, and I'm going to be, be presenting on behalf of both the children and teens programming that we have here at our library. So let me advance. Um, here are some of the partnerships that we have here. Um, community partnerships. We work with Hot and Sweet Donut Shop. It's our local don donut shop here in town. Um, they partner with us for library card sign-up month. Also summer reading program prizes and our trunk or treat costume contest prizes. Um, we also present, or we also partner with our Walmart and Safeway. Walmart helps us with our life skills that we have here in both the children and teen department. Um, our pumpkin carving event and our summer reading kickoff that we have. And I will speak more on the kickoff. It is so much fun. Um, I'm sure all of you guys have some type of summer reading kickoff, but. Um, I have a fun video to show you guys when we get there. The um, Safeway also helps us with the pumpkin carving event and our summer reading kickoff. We also partner with our local police department and fire department. Um, I have two pictures here that just show um, the life skills that they helped us with. The kids were actually really, really excited for this. Um, the police officers, we had a kid that was very, very afraid of police officers and up at the end of the program felt comfortable to be around a police officer and engaged with the police officers, so it was really nice. Um, the, they also come for story times as well here that we have at the library. The next one that we have that partners with us is our Page Food Pantry. Um, they help provide snacks for our young patrons. So after school, we get tons of kids that come in. Um, and I will talk about the meal program that we do later, but we also snack them with the snacks that are provided from the food pantry. Um, they also provide our patrons with fresh fruits and vegetables, which is really, really nice for them. Um, sometimes water and drinks as well. If they have excess from there, they ask if we would like that donation and we just have a table set up in front of our circulation desk and we have bags that patrons can take as much as they want, as much as they need. Um, we also have, we work with the city. So the one person that I did want to highlight is our mayor. Um, I don't know if you can see the arrow, but I'm, he's the, he's, uh -huh. Yep, he's a little guy right there. <laughs> he's really, really sweet. Um, he loves doing story time here at the library. And one thing I do love about him is that he gets down to the kids' level to read with them. He's not standing above mm -hmm. them or anything like that. He really takes the time to read and engage, not just with the kids, but with the parents as well. So we love having him here for our story times. Um, Coconino Health, they also come for our health fairs, which I'll talk about in a little bit that we have here. And they also help us with our life skills that we have. So they're awesome. Um, Fitness Odyssey is our one and only local gym that we have here. They also help provide programming for our life skills that we have for the teens. Um, so they come in, they teach them some basic gym exercises that they can do, things that they can do at home just to stay fit and healthy. So it's really, really nice to have them. Um, we also partner with Bank of America. They came and did a life skills class with our teens to teach them how to open up a bank account um, and to help kind of manage their own accounts. So um, that's much needed. Um, we're trying to get that, see how we can do that on the younger patron side, the children's that I 
that I work with, the zero to 11 age group, not zero year olds, <laughs> the middle school probably age group, but um, to do banking for that age group to kind of just set them up to know how to handle money. Um, we're noticing that kids don't actually really know what money is. They don't know paper money, coins, those types of things. So um, we're trying to get those life skills into that age group as well. Stay grounded coffee and brew it coffee to go. They um, help us with our pumpkin carving event. They give us prizes, grand prize or prizes, donations that will go towards the costume contest. So they help us with that. Um, they also participate in a lot of our events that we have. Um, the teen program, they, they have um, partnered with the community garden and we've actually been able to take teens down to our local garden. Um, to grow vegetables and fruits and just learn how to do that. Um, we are a community where we are surrounded by local reservations, but to get to anything bigger than, than Page, which we only have two stores here, um, grocery stores, it's a two hour drive either up through Utah or down towards Flagstaff. So um, it's just us up here. And then we also partner with Ranch House Grill. They are a um, local restaurant here and uh, Debbie and I will both kind of talk about what they've partnered with us in later slides but they're one another one of our community partners for the children's let me just advance a little bit um, some other partnerships that we have are with the schools I've listed all the schools here that that we have um, we do many things from Read Across America, which is coming up. One of the biggest things that we do, all staff try to get a turn to read to a classroom. We try to hit as many, if not all the classrooms as we can. Um, we also help them with their family nights that they have going on or their health fairs, back to school fairs that they have. We participated in the different homecoming, graduation parades that they've had. Um, the high school does a health and wellness fair for the teens. Um, it's to focus on mental health issues um, that we're noticing the incline in the youth. So we participate in that programming. Um, we also offer school tours weekly. So we have schools that are coming in for programming and for book checkouts. Um, the schools have to where the kids aren't able to check out books outside of their school. So it stays within the school classroom. So um, we partner with them so that they're able to come here to the library so that they're able to check out books to take home to read. So those are some of the things that we do with them. We also have a volunteer program that allows students to acquire their volunteer hours needed to graduate high school. So we have that here as well, which has been really nice. We've had kids that taken advantage of that um, for both the, the breaks that we've had so far, the fall and the winter break. That's been really, really nice. Um, Glen Canyon Outdoor Academy, they are a new school. This is the second year that they've been about um, right here. They, they are partnering with a lot of stuff and they really use our resources really, really well. Um, I will talk more about them in further slides. Okay, some of the family programs I'd like to highlight, this is a big one, is our Page Health and Resource Fair. Um, this started in spring of 2022. We call it Spring into Health. And um, we partnered with Blue Cross Blue Shields Health Choice and also Flagstaff, Flagstaff Dentistry for Kids. So um, they service patrons ages one through 18 years of age. Um, and they give them free x-rays, dental cleaning, fluoride treatments, and sealant application provided by a licensed dental provider. Um, guardians are able to set appointments needed for further evaluation if they need or follow-up care. Um, this is all that we also include local preschools, the NRTA, um, child care resources and referral, first things first, Coconino Health and other local agencies that we have in our community to help um, show families what we have service-wise for them. Um, this this part of it does health screening. So we've had those who maybe need to be seen for an IEP um, be able to get evaluated here at the library to see if they qualify for those services. Um, mental health information, car seat safety. Um, we've done prizes and giveaways at these events. So our first event, we served 120 patrons in our community and 60 of those were able to get dental care. 
Um, so that was our first event. So in 2023, we saw that there was a need. Um, so we coordinated to provide it twice a year. So we have the spring into health and resource fair, and we also have one six months later fall around the fall time. So we call it fall into health. Um, and so now patrons are getting that six month checkup and they don't have to travel outside of page to get the dental care. Um, granted that they don't need extended care to go actually to the dental cares in Flagstaff. Um, we also right here, you can see some tables that are full of clothing. So we were donated a bunch of gently used and new, new clothing, diapers. Um, we also we had like puppy pads there as well, winter coats. Um, we were able to give out all these free clothes to families in need at that next event or this event. It was really, really nice and needed. Um, there's families that were able to get, like I said, we only have two stores here, so we have to travel two hours to get or order online to get um, clothing for our families here. Um, this event that we had served 300 patrons and 125 of those we're receiving dental services. So our dental services is two days. It's Friday and Saturday, and the resource fair is typically just on Saturday. Um, but we saw that it's continuing to increase in the need of service. So this year in April, we are going to do our um, third health fair, and we are going to do the resource fair on both that Friday and Saturday. So we extended it the extra day to get that information out to families. So this is one of our our bigger events that we have for the children's um, department. Next, I was going to talk about our movies in the park and games. Um, this event is a lot of fun. It's not too much work. As you can see, we have like this. Uh, someone does have a question about something you talked about a little while ago. So I want to jump on that before we move okay. too far ahead. Yeah. Someone just wants to know. So yeah. So just reminder, anyone you have any questions at any time, go ahead and type it in. I can grab them from you um, for you, for the presenters, for the speakers, whenever. Um, they wanted to know what kind of life skills are included for the younger kids. Ooh, if you don't mind, can I talk about that in a little bit just because I have a whole slide for that? Oh, perfect. That... All right, then. Perfect. All okay. Right. Yeah. All right. No problem. Thank you for that question, though. I, I'm excited now to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but for the Movies on Park, so um, Debbie is the master at getting grants here at our library, and we were able to get this gigantic screen that you see here. Um, it's nice. <laughs> it's only, I think, blown down one time. <laughs> so we found we found out how to stake it right, so that way it doesn't blow away with, we call it page winds, because it does get windy here. Um, but this started out, I feel like the first time it was, it was like smaller, it was kind of hesitant. Now it's a huge program that we have in the summer. Um, we do offer this four times. So bi-weekly, we do it during the summertime. Um, the first, part of the day at 5 p.m. we have lawn games that are available so we have nine square volleyball bubbles water games chess checkers etc um, we do let the patrons know that these items are available for checkout at our library so that way they can also use them if they were to set up you know family functions or anything that they might need these for um, so we start out with that and then the movie starts at dusk. So we do close the games at that time. So that way everyone can enjoy the movie without hearing all the fun that's going on. Um, and we also invite vendors to sell food and we set up a donation table for popcorn. Um, that money does go towards programming to or into further fun, like again, the popcorn and all of that for the next movies that we have. Um, so last year we had approximately 1200 that attended, um, those programs that we had so um, i love those programs and we're already planning for this summer's movie and the park program so that one's a great one page preschool parent roundup is something that um actually i just listened to the patrons in our community they were talking about they didn't know how to sign up for preschool when preschool was signing up um so i just kind of made this a program after a um, tiny top program, which is the zero to five age group. So that way the families are already here um, when they were done or kind of in between, they can go to any of the preschool tables and kind of get information or sign up right there on the spot. Um, so for that one, we do have the free notary services, printing services, 
um, health screens as well. So if their child does feel like they need an IEP, we all we have that AZIP um, provider there that's able to help evaluate the child or at least set up um, a time that they can be evaluated. Um, and then the schools give out their school information that um, that way the families aren't trying to go here, there, and everywhere. So those are th that's the third program <laughs> I'd like to talk about. I'm gonna advance. Okay, so another one that's pretty big is for Native American Heritage Month, we do, um, it is essentially a fry bread day. So we kind of, we teach the kids how to make fry bread. Um, traditionally, they get to eat it and they, not just the kids, their families come as well um, to make it. So we just focus on the beauty of Native American culture. We do songs. Um, and yeah, just have a good time to eat. And I don't know if you guys can see the picture, but we have learned not to let the kids be in control of how much powdered sugar they put on their fry bread because they are very hyper after. Is so, that the white there is all powdered sugar? Okay. That's all powdered <laughs> that sugar. That's all powdered sugar on their faces. Yeah, it's all powdered sugar. So um, if you do an event like that, just maybe you guys control it because you'll have kids that are just bouncing off the book stacks. <laughs> Figures <laughs> it, not literally. Um, the next event that we do is our family pumpkin carving event. I love this event. This one, like I said, is um, Walmart and Safeway do contribute to this. Um, one year we did have a local, um, like, I guess it's not even like a farmer. It's just a individual that had pumpkins that they were growing in their garden and donated pumpkins. Um, so we're able to let families carve and just have that time together to carve pumpkins. We supply all the carving utensils that they would need, the stencils for it, and then of course the pumpkins. So just depending on the family size is dependent on how many pumpkins that they're able to um, take for their family, just because that is like a, don a donation type of program. Whatever we get donated is how many families we're able to serve. But that one's always full. Um, within the first two weeks of putting registration out there, that one's already already full and they all come. So we love that program. Um, another one that we have is Christmas at the ranch, which used to be our Super Saturday. Um, so it's kind of essentially two, two of the same things. I think Debbie's gonna talk a little bit more about this one too, but um, this one is one that we do our Toys for Tots party, but also we, um have partnered with that ranch house grill they decided to open up their restaurant for us to be able to give patrons free pictures with santa claus um food we do um gingerbread gingerbread house making so we supply all the kits for them they just literally show up eat build take pictures have fun um, pepsi also sponsors all of the drinks for that and this past year we actually were able to get little caesar's pizza to donate pizzas um, for that event we also have a cookie bake-off that we do in december so we have patrons that um, bake cookies for that event and um, it goes for the toys for tots but we actually it's it's like it's the best part of the the whole cookie bake-off is we get to sample the cookies before, but also it's also the hardest part because you're tasting so many different cookies that it's it's a sugar rush in yourself. So that's mm -hmm. a fun event that we get to do prior to bringing those cookies over for this event that we have. Um, we get a lot of people for that one. I'm, sh I'm sure Debbie has the number for how many we're able to serve for that one. So that was just another one of the family programs that we do here at the library. I'm going to advance. So we do Night Out with Pops. I kind of try to do a lot of programs focusing with the fathers because in our everyday programs, I do see that it's a lot of the mothers that are coming. We do have fathers as well, but it is mostly majority mothers, grandmothers that are coming. So we do try to highlight um, our hardworking fathers, grandpas, uncles, any father figure that there is for the children in our community to spend the night with their, um, spend time with their um, adult male figure. So we, for this event, we had a popcorn bar. So we popped popcorn and had a bunch of different toppings that they can put on. Um, we also catered to one of our local restaurants, Bird House, for them to have food. We had lots of arts and crafts for them. 
Um, we do something very similar when we have our Father's Day event as well, um, but this is a popular program that also registered within the first week registration, we were full for that one as well. Um, another family program that we do is we do monthly movies. Um, we do get a lot of families for this one, actually. We, we kind of look at the school schedules to see if there's any Friday that the kids are not in school, um, or we just look for a Friday that works best for us as well. But we just have a movie that's playing. We give patrons popcorn and they're able to come in with their families and just um, enjoy a movie without going and having to pay to go to a, our movie theater here in town. Okay. Um, one of our big programs that we do is the trunk or treat event. So this we actually do for the entire city. This is one of the big ones that we have. Um, we started in our parking lot and we grew to the city park. Um, we do have registration for trunkers to be able to um, provide candy for the community. Um, they also get to decorate their trunk and be um, voted in by popular vote. So the community gets to vote on what their favorite trunk is um, at the end of the trunk or treats treat day they will get like a certificate or um a gift card whatever we did were able to get that year um, to be presented to them for winning that we also do a costume contest as well so we do one for the kids teens adults and then we also do most original or like homemade costume so we do that as well this is a, a very very big event for our town last year our number was 4795 patrons attended this um, wow. our library is or our page is um, like a tourist area so this wasn't just patrons that were in our community a lot of it was people um, from out of state out of town that just saw the flyer like at hotels and just decided to come for this event so that's one of our our biggest events that i would say that we have is our truck or treat section that's and there's amazing i love it <laughs> <laughs> and my two kids <laughs> and this was the children's coordinator before me <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, so I'm going to advance. Um, these are so much fun. If you don't do this at your library, I highly suggest even thinking about doing it. We do a ch teen and children's after hours. Um, this, we have a Nerf Wars. So, okay, it's after hours. So it's when the library closes. Um, we do ours for the children's. We do it for two hours and the teens do it for three hours. And so what we do is with a, wa a waiver signed and everything, they're able, if you see, the, oh, I'm pointing without the cursor, they have little wristbands that lets us know that they're able to, to do the Nerf Wars itself. Um, so we just have a whole big collection of Nerf guns and Nerf bullets that they're able to just have a war with each other. And it's so much fun. They do have to wear goggles or the glasses to be able to actually participate in that part of it. But we also have like photo photo booths that they're able to go to, gaming areas. We have karaoke, um, pizza, music. It's just a time for them, a safe place for them to enjoy um, each other's company without, I mean, the, our library is like the only thing we have um, in town for the kids so it's a safe place for them to just have a night to them and and um, not have to worry about um, anything that might be going on at home or anything like that so tell about the adults that find the thing oh yeah yeah oh and so what our older patrons love is they always love when we have these programs because I wouldn't even say the next day it's like the next week to like the next month they're finding the, the little nerf bullets around the library within the book stack so they <laughs> love when we have these events themselves it's, it's so funny so for this um event we usually average 80 to 100 patrons for this event um it just depends on the age group if it's the children's or the teens mm -hmm. okay Alrighty, this is the fun page. Okay, so our summer reading, I know we all do summer reading programs. Um, last year was so much fun for us because it was all together now. So um, our vision for the summer reading program was to um, incorporate our community into it because we are such a small library and we're so far away from everybody. It's really just, we, we have to be a community. <laughs> we have to work together to be able to um, have just, a safe place for all of our patrons. So um, for the summer reading kickoff, we have the Page Fire and Police 
they volunteer to um, grill hot dogs, do our snow cones, and we have a couple volunteers that help us pass those out because we're inside trying to get families registered, um, get library cards made for those who might not have them to be able to do the summer reading event. Um, one year we were able to take, as you can see right here, we were able to take a group of kids to the river trip. They did have to qualify for it by reading. It just depended on their age group. They had to meet a certain milestone to be able to attend that. Um, we also were able to take the kids to a trip to St. George for the Children's Museum. We were able to give families healthy food classes. Um, this one we did like a parfait. It was I feel like a lot of patrons kind of just stumbled in and they didn't know that it was happening. So they were like, oh, you guys do this? And we're like, oh yeah, once a week we're doing healthy food classes. So we really grew, we're able to grow that um, and be able to teach you know, the young patrons that they don't need many things to be able to create a healthy food for them that they can eat at any time. So it was really, really nice. Of course, we have the grade and age level programming. Um, we did an adopt a grandparent event, which, which the whole, community loved. Um, essentially what they did is we went to our our um, our beehive, can you, what is it called? Senior Center. Senior Center, thank you. Um, our local senior centers and we got names of the elderly that were that are in their care. Um, and then we we're able to let parent or we got like information as what size maybe clothes they were or socks, um, what foods they were able to have, um, things that they might need hygiene wise, those kinds of things. Um, and we were able to make up these tags and then families would come in, pull a tag, and then they would essentially adopt a grandparent, get those items for the grandparents, and then we delivered them um, to the senior center. So that one's that was one of my favorite programs that we did over the summer. And then of course the summer reading party. Um, this is the children's, these three pictures is what I had for the children's of how big our party was. We had an awesome foam machine, um, put a pool underneath it maybe or something. It might kill your grass. Um, our maintenance guy wasn't too happy with me, but I learned to put a pool under it. So we're good now. As you can see, there's a pool now. <laughs> Um, and then if I can, I would like to show you guys our kickoff video. This is what how we promoted the summer reading program to our community in a fun way. Is that okay? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. You gonna switch over to the video or? I, th I think it'll just, there we go. Here and now, it's time for celebration. Only figures out. Yeah, yeah. We live together. Hey guys, it's almost time for the 2023 summer reading program here at the library. This year, our theme is All Together Now, and what that means is friendship, kindness, unity. So, on May 25th, which is the last day of school, from 1 to 2.30 p.m., we will be hosting our summer reading program kickoff here at the library. We'll also have the fire department and the police department here serving you guys hot dogs and snow cones. And on that day, you can sign up for the summer reading program, which if you do, you will be entered into the raffle for that day where you can win a free prize. So mark your calendars for May 25th. Hi everyone, my name is Sierra and I'm the Children's Coordinator here at Page Public Library. Hi, my name is Dawn. I am the Children's Librarian Assistant. Let's talk about our reading goals. For infant and kinder, it is eight hours. For first through third grade, you have to complete 12 hours. And fourth and fifth, you have to complete 16 hours. You'll also have a chance to win small prizes throughout the reading, like steak part passes, personal pan pizza, and mochi. <laughs>
if you complete the summer reading program, you'll be invited to the summer reading program party where you can raffle for big prizes like bikes, scooters, Nintendo Switch, tablets, and more. Our programming will be on Monday for Kinder through First from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. Tuesday will be second and third from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. and fourth and fifth from 2.15 to 3.15. Wednesday will be our five and under from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. And Thursday will be an all-family program for all ages at 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. So make sure you join us for our summer reading, reading programs. programs. Okay, now to figure out how to exit. Ms. Wilson, you're okay. We're going to leave that one and go back to the presentation. Okay. That was awesome. That was a great you. video. I have to send, is the link in the slides here or you have to send that along? So um, if people wanted to, is that somewhere publicly where people can view it? Yeah, yeah. So it is actually posted to our Facebook page, but I'm also able to provide that link to you guys if you guys yeah, would like yeah. to see it on your own time. Um, so the thing about that is, is every, every year we kind of up it in a way. So this year we've already had people saying we expect something great. So we're, <laughs> we're trying to brainstorm at the moment how to do that. But um, that Victim was of your own success. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was really fun. It was really fun to get the community engaged in that and just the willingness to have like the police department, the, the local donut shop. If you saw the girl with the donuts in the beginning, um, police the police department, and the fire department, just for their willingness to be able to participate in that um, kind of just speaks to how how our community operates. So. Um, I love that one. <laughs> that was, yeah, I love the dancing. That's why I want to see the video because, yeah, co I don't know how it went to other people, but sometimes when you're broadcasting videos through um, webinars like this, they're a little choppy. Oh, okay. Um, but we could hear it and see it and stuff, but I, I, I definitely need to watch that again. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, yes, I will definitely. But someone does have a question about that, which I'll ask right now since you just mentioned the, the fire and police department. Um, how did you get them to participate? <laughs> um, was it, did you call them? What, did they offer? How did how'd you make that happen? <laughs> Yeah, so they are, they're big partners with us and a lot of things that we do. So um, we easily, we kind of just went down there and showed up and said, hey, we're doing this video for a summer reading program. Would you guys like to participate? Um, the fire department actually right there on the spot. Oh, yeah, they were cleaning their um, trucks and they're like, we'll be done right after this and we can we can record with you and we're like oh okay like it was just like right away they're willing to do it and then we actually did have to schedule which which is understandable but we had to schedule with the police department to be able to get um officers that were able to um do that program or do that video with us so that's just part of having already a, a really good partnership and good relationship with them to start with yeah and don't be afraid to ask like i always when it comes to like asking for donations and stuff it, it does kind of feel scary at times but my mindset it's for the children in our community and this is mm -hmm. they need these things so um, i don't have a problem asking <laughs> i just go and ask the worst they can tell you is no <laughs> exactly yeah okay so that's our summer reading Okay, let's see. Okay, and then we do provide um, baby playtime and tiny tots. They're essentially kind of about the same thing. Um, baby playtime is for ages zero to three. So I did see that there was a lot of babies in our tiny tot programs and they were kind of just getting trampled over and just it just wasn't safe for them. Um, so I decided to split up the programs and create the baby playtime. So um, we do a lot of sensory, of course, story time, song, social emotional, the fine motor skills. Um, we do pancakes and pajamas. Of course, they learn through play, um, early literacy tips for parents and guardians. We also, with that, provide parenting classes and CPR classes. And when we do those things, we offer um, that time for us to be able to watch their child because they don't we don't have that care we don't have um we don't have anywhere for s people to just drop their kid off we don't have like a kinder care we don't have anything like that so um, we were able to watch their children as they participated in those types of classes the parenting and cpr classes so that way they were able to come so that was that's really really nice so um I noticed after COVID, I'm sure you guys did too, is that there was a new social norm for the children. They're very timid, they're very shy and in interacting with each other, um, especially the infant. 
through the preschool age. They just didn't know how to interact with each other. They were just glued to the hip to their provider. Um, so I'm really big on social, the social aspect, the social emotional aspect of my programs. Of course, I do include the story and the songs, um, but I do a big portion of my programming. I do for the kids to be able to interact with each other. I provide the sensory tables. I provide um, arts and crafts, just a bunch of different things that they're able to learn to play with each other. Um, and actually, this has been not just beneficial for the babies and the and the tiny tots, but it's also very beneficial to the parents. As you can see, there's parents that are able to communicate and talk with one another um, in a setting where their kids are learning and developing as well. So um, I don't know. I just I don't know about you guys, but I just feel like after COVID, that was a big thing that I just wanted to implement into my programs. Um, I've been to other programs where they don't do so much interaction as far as like having these things out for the entire first part of the programming. It's they read a book and then they do um, like a craft or anything or maybe like small group settings afterwards. Um, but I have seen kids that in the beginning, like right after COVID, when I first started here, that they were not interacting at all. And now you would never know that they had any social, emotional um, skills that weren't developing. Mm -hmm. So this has been something that the families love. And like I said, we don't have much here in our town, like the parks is all the families can go to. So be able to get this time in here and already have activities and those kinds of things planned. They really have taken advantage of it. And they definitely are requesting more days than what we already are doing. We're doing two, two times a week between the both both of the ages, um, but with all the other programming we're doing at this time, it's it's hard to give more than that, but they do still come. We have early liter literacy section in our library that they do come and they're able to explore. It's just not a program that's planned. They just come on their own. So they're doing that as well. Um, I'm going to advance just because there's a couple things different we do for the tiny tots. So for the tiny tots, we also do um, offsite offsite programming. So we do go to the parks or we go to um, the local um, donut shop to have programming there. So those ones, because they are a little bit of older age group, um, we do programming like that as well. Um, one thing that I implemented in these programs um, is low-key programs, um, kind of like calm down programs. So to help kids mm -hmm. calm or for kids that maybe have sensory issue with so much noise or the lights, we do programming that's um, dimmer and calmer. So those have been a hit and that's open to anybody to come as well um, for those age groups. Put in advance. Oh, after school programming, I didn't even write notes because I feel like I can talk about after school programming for days. Um, we have the new We Are Water exhibit here at the library. It's, it's provided a lot of programming for our kids that involve water. So hands on water, or just water issues that we have, we're right next to the dam. So um, a lot of our kids do use the lake um, for just their luxury usage, if, if I may. So um, just the safety around water and all of that, they're able to explore. Our life skills, you guys were asking about some of the classes that we do for life skills. So we've initially started with Paige Life Skills Kids. Um, and when that grant was over, we went to, we're now on A to Z Life Skills Kids. It's another grant that we have. Um, we do so many different things. So we do uh, monthly hygiene kits. Um, like I said, we are surrounded by local reservations. So we do have a lot of homes that still don't have running water to their homes. Um, so not all the kids are getting their hygiene needs. So we are providing kits. The kits can include um, deodorants. They include toothbrush, toothpaste. They include a comb. They include body soap. Um, they include, oh, I'm trying to think. There's a lot of things that we, hand sanitizer. Um, tissue, just 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 to fit as many as those basic needs as we can. Um, there is sanitary pads for the girls if they if they do need it, so we're able to include those in them. Um, and the teens also did um, a similar life skills, A to Z life skill teens is what it was called, and they did um, like homemade laundry. They did the banking, self care, high, health and wellness. Um, so they're able to get like Fitness Odyssey to come in and do a program. Um, they were able to do hair care as well. So we had a barber that came in and taught the kids hair care. And they, he also gave out free haircuts to 
um, kids with parent permission. So the boys that needed haircuts, they were able to get a free haircut as long as that parent permission was there. Um, we also have done dental programs. So to teach the kids how to properly like floss your tooth, which we use just like a Lego and Play-Doh and we got some floss and showed them how to floss, floss their teeth. Um, we do a lot on social skills. Um, I feel like nowadays these kids are really big into social media. So their social kids, their social skills and with interacting with each other um, can be a bit difficult for them. So we have tried to implement different things. We have a lot of like things for checkout as well, like games that they're able to do. Um, or we do like journaling, we do just a bunch, whatever, whatever the money will let us do. We do just a bunch of, of activities around the life skills for them. Um, cooking classes as well, as you see down here, we're just doing simple ingredients that they probably have at home, cereal, bananas, yogurt. Um, they made banana sushi that day. Um, we've also done like egg drop ex experiments. So for our STEM and STEAM activities, um, one of our newer ones, I do have a slide for it, but it's cookies and complaining. Um, this is one of the most popular. I mean, the kids come and talk to us about their day or complain about certain situations anyway. So I was like, hey, why not provide a program around this? So um, we do cookies and complaining where I give them cookies and juice and I am just there to listen. I don't give advice, nothing like that. I'm just an ear to listen for them. Um, the kids know it is a safe place. Nothing goes outside the walls and they are able to complain about whatever they want. Um, the first program we had kids complaining about weather issues and climate issues. And I'm like, okay, but you guys are able to complain about your days. It could be about the library. It could be about anything. Um, and now they look forward to that program. We have it monthly. So that's one of their favorite programs that we do. Um, we also do a book tasting. I'm sure maybe you guys have done that before. Um, a lot of kids love graphic novels and I kind of wanted to just have them be able to read beyond that. So we set up a book tasting essentially. It's just each table has a different genre of books that they're able to get a taste of. They read a little bit of it and then they get to switch. Um, actually, we kind of serve the books. So it's like a real restaurant. So we just take the books and go to the next table, bring them to the next table and they get to read a little bit of each genre and they get to write, write about each one and what their thoughts were. Um, we also, like I talked about before, do the family movies. Um, we've done a science fair in the past. We're gonna bring that back to life. Um, and one of the newer programs I do, actually these kids do want to read to us, which is really exciting. Um, their grade level or their reading level, at least here in our town, is a lot lower um, than what they should be at. So I just do a read for red vines program, super easy. We have a container of red vines. Um, I pick level one books that they're able to read. Um, I pick two books that they have, so they have a choice of which book they wanna read to me and they read the book to me, they get three red vines. We do have some kids that are a little bit intimidated at first and I just tell them, I'll just help you through the book. It's fine, you'll do fine. Um, and that's one of the favorite programs and we do that weekly for the kids. Um, our after school meals, um, it's from Kids Cafe. Debbie's gonna talk more about like what funds the after school meals. I'm just gonna kind of give you guys numbers on how many we're giving out. Um, so whew, after school meal program is um, a big program that we have. These kids, like I said, we are, they we're a small area so we have a lot of them that come off the reservation and if their parents are working, they don't come and pick them up till the, basically the, school, the library closes, um, so they need meals. So we give out about 80 to 100 meals a day, and that's just after school. Um, so how we do that is we have a microwave. There's literally about three, three of us that are warming up meals. Um, one warming up, one bagging, and then one delivering, basically is what we're doing, just delivering with the kids in the library. Um, and we're giving out meals to kids. Um, I think that's it for the, it's just a lot. It seemed, I felt like there was more to that when I was talking, but um, I feel like when you're like here doing it, it feels a lot more, but it's it's a program that I would never want to go away because it's it's what these what the kids need. So um, mm -hmm. yeah, we do have microwaves for that. We have a microwave and we have two freezers and a fridge um, here. We have multiple microwaves, not just one. We have multiple and we've gone through multiple microwaves. I think we're on our fourth microwave um just because we're warming up for like over an hour at a time to get those meals out 
Um, some I just want to highlight some of our favorite checked out materials. So we have a teacher checkout. Um, we do have a book here at the library. It's just a binder that we've printed um, just pictures to show teachers what they have access to. So they have access to everything we have, but we also have um, other material that are in the back for them that they're able to use for their classrooms. We also have launch pads. Um, these are very, very popular. These do not need Wi-Fi. So um, like I said, we are two hours away from um, a bigger city. So there's not a lot of connection there as far as like um, mobile connection. So they don't need Wi-Fi or anything for these. They're able to travel with them. So a lot of families check them out while they travel. Um, we also have our early literacy kits, our life skill kits. So those life skill kits, I was able to get with those grants. Um, a lot of them are games that families can do. Most of them are actually games that families can do. Um, and then just our kits in general. We have three towers and two book stacks or bookshelves full of kits that are available to check out. Anything from early literacy, um, actually brain boxes. So like the, the baby age group, um, all the way to, I do 11 years of age. So we have family games, we have um, popcorn machines. We, we just have a ton of things in our um, kits that are available to check out. And then of course our books, our books are actually big. We just got new shelving um, for the kids. So they're able to flip by looking at the cover of the books. So they're able to flip through the books and we increased our book outs by like a hundred checkouts or checkouts, sorry, for books by a hundred um and our in-house checkout so we have the nintendo switch and tablets that are available to kids um, we just have some things in-house those are very very popular um, and kids are always checking them out here in the children's department some new programs that i have going on so we have a ooh, you're not gonna have a lot of time to talk i'm sorry i'm gonna go fast so that we can talk to you guys I didn't know it was gonna be this this long. Good, that's kind of good though. Um, we have our, so for school outreach, I'm doing a Ritza for pizza challenge. Um, so we are going to allow the classes, or we're gonna have the classes come in to check out books. And then whatever class reads the most books, depending on age, it's by the book or by the minute, um, those classes will provide a pizza party for them. I did go over the cookies and complaining. That's one of our newer programs. Um, and then we have an art festival coming up. So I have this idea called Let Your Voice Be Heard. So essentially a lot of our kids have a hard time reading. Um, and they also with that have a hard time writing. So what I have is a canvas for them. They're able to create their art on it and then tell their story. So I will capture their voice via audio with parent permission. Um, and then we'll display a QR code by their painting at the art festival. So that way people, patrons can go around, just scan that QR code and they're able to listen to the story that goes with that painting. So um, that is coming up. And then my revived programs is the science fair we're going to be doing um, next month. Uh, we're gonna do the science, science fair and then our thousand books. So we just had a thousand books before kindergarten. So I've added a thousand books and things before kindergarten, a thousand books and things um, before third grade and then 500 books and things before sixth grade. So those are some of the revived ones. Um, and then I'm gonna let Debbie hop on and then we can, if we have time, we can do questions. <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Yeah. Um, okay, how do I do this? Sorry, I'm going to have to go to my Canva. Sorry, <laughs> um, is this mine or yours? That's yours. Yeah, we do have a couple of questions, but you did answer some of them. Um, we, you can ask the questions while I'm trying to get into my, my <laughs> email. Um, oh, for the teen and children's, um, the, the lock-ins, I believe, the, the after hours. Uh, let's see. Ooh, where'd it go? I lost it. Um, oh, how does that work? Do the parents just drop off their kids or...? <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. yeah, pretty much. So we do have um, a registration form that needs to be signed prior to that event um, or at the event. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, guardians just drop off their children for that event. And we have them for that a lot amount of time if it's the two hours or three hours. And then they just have to be back to pick up their child. So we just make sure each child gets back 
home safe or back to a guardian safely. Um, right. We've never had an issue where we've had to call like the officers because a parent hasn't showed up or anything like that. So that's been fortunate on our side. Okay, awesome. All right, go ahead, Debbie, with your presentation. Your okay. So I'm Debbie Winlock, the Page Public Library Manager. So one thing I got to tell you is that we have um, we do lots of programming inside and outside, and we're really big about going out into our community so we can hear what our community needs are. So one of the things that is really important that I um, is that when we interview anybody at the library, we tell them, you know, we do outside activities in the evening and on weekends. Are you available to work those times? I really think that's big because, um, and we also cross train in every area. So every staff member will work in every area. So we make sure that we um, let people know that because sometimes we end up hiring people and then they don't want to work at night at movies in the park or do those things because libraries don't do movies in the park, <laughs> but we do. Um, we'll talk about some partners. I, um, our community today faces many complex challenges. So we need um, minds to find solutions, same minds to find solutions. So partnering with these all these agencies not only help us um, do programming, but they help us provide um, we get grants from them or we get um, their their services and their knowledge to do these programs. So I'm going to go over a couple few um, programs here. So Glen Canyon Conservancy and the Pal Museum and Archives. We have monthly lectures here at the library. We either have authors or p um, people from the dam come in and do presentations um, monthly. And then we also have a symposium that we do on the weekend, one, one weekend out of the year where we do lectures, um, quite a few lectures during the day, but then we also go out in the field. So we'll go um, to the lake or we'll just we'll just have field trips for that um, weekend. Um, the Canyon Club also, uh, page also uh, partner with them and we do a lot of outside lectures with them also. Um, the Page Unified School District, we do tons of things with them, um, including a um, Grand, Ca Ca Grand Circle Storytown Festival where we have all these authors come in and or these, these um, storytellers come in and they tell stories. Um, we do that at the school, but we invite everybody and then they go into this classrooms to do their storytelling and try to encourage kids to tell their stories. Um, we also partner with them for um, poets and authors readings. So they come into the library. We bring poets from all over um, to do that. Um, and indigenous days, we have schools from all four corners, um, Utah, Colorado, um, Arizona, come into um, come to Page to do singing, dancing, Native American arts and crafts. It's a huge evening of celebrating um, our indigenous indigenous people. Um, let's see. Um, we partner with First Things First, who is um, an Arizona organization that supports healthy development of learning for children from birth to age five. So they are the what they are the kids. Um, sorry. They, um, they are the ones that provide our first aid CPR for um, parents and even for teens. So we have a teen parent class. We also have a babysitting class for the teens and then they're able to take the CPR and first aid class also. Um, then we do Toys for Tots um, at the Ranch House Grill, as she said, and Pepsi help us do that. Last year we gave out, um, this last December, we gave out 835 toys we had over 300 people attend the party um, and our businesses gave us about 200 toys were donated to our, our program. Um, the rest of the toys come from Toys for Top program in Flagstaff. Um, we have a job fair that we do with the Marriott and the Coconino Community College. We do that yearly. We have over 400 participants come in. We provide um, laptops and printers for people to print their resumes. We also provide, we also have a staff member there to help them write their resumes if they need to. Um, and the people and the businesses get to interview. We have an interview room, they interview people and people get hired that day. It's a big day for the um, businesses and people looking for jobs. We also pro uh, provide free tax preparation and um, yeah, for, with AARP every year for three months, we do that for three months. So the St. Mary's Food Bank and Circle of Page, we provide, um, they give us meals. So last year we provided 12,647 meals. And they also do backpack meals, which are meals that are provided for the weekend during the, or for the weekend families. Um, and we provided, did I say that, 1,248 of those last year. 
We also, um, the Circle of Page Food Pantry, which she said also gives us fresh fruits and vegetables to give up to our community. Um, AZLA, the Arizona Library Association, has some wonderful grants that we were able to receive. So we were able to do some fun summer reading programs like going to the river. I won't talk about that much. Um, I think she already hit on that. Um, the city events that we attend are like the 4th of July and the library provides um, a big part of it. Um, we have a pie eating contest, a watermelon eating contest. We have tons of water games going on. You can see those pictures. This one is the art festival. We had a color by number um, big poster here. So people were, it was a fundraiser. They paid a dollar to color some spots in. And by the time they were done, it was our horseshoe bend um, that we have here in, in Page. Hmm. Um, we think it's really important that um, we don't just talk about things that are needed. We like to walk the talk, I guess. <laughs> so um, some of the services that we provide are free notaries. We go outside of the library to do that. We will go to homes, homes for people that are bedridden. We've gone to the rodeos because the rodeos need notaries for the participants, and some of them don't ever get that done until that day. Um, we've done, we've started our first, our, we did our first page con this last um, February. People wanted mm -hmm. to go to the big ones, and we are two hours away from the next big city. And so a lot of people don't have transportation or they don't have the money to do this. So we did our first page con, as you can see, and we had over 500 participants join us that day. Um, we do after hours for adults. Yes, we do gaming, we do board games, and yes, we do Nerf Wars with them also. Um, Faith-based organizations, have out, we've outreached to them. Um, um, next week, I'm going to do a teen youth group. We're going to do planners. We're going to talk about the importance of organization. They all get a free planner um, and um, learn why it's important to be organized. Um, they do adult scrapbooking. We do Wi-Fi mobile hotspots lending. Um, we have tons of library things. Our small business assistants, we've gotten grants for that, and we help small businesses with menus. Like they, We print their menus for them. We laminate them. Um, we help them in um, just, you know, we, we look and listen to what their needs are because, again, we're two hours away that they can't have large posters printed. Um, it takes a week or two to get them done. So we provide that service free to them with our grant money. Um, hopefully we'll find more grants to keep that going. Along with that, our businesses end up giving us almost over $4,000 worth of services to, for the um, summer reading program adult prizes. So these are great, great partners. I can't, I can't just tell you how much partners mean to us and, and how strong that we've built them together, our relationships. We have a memory project. We have the beehive where we go to home, the beehives, um, the senior homes, and we do a craft and a reading and we take them books. Um, so that's what I have for you. Did we make it? It's 2.59. <laughs> no, you're fine. You're fine. Yeah. Um, do you want to, your camera looks got moved up a little. Do you want to tilt it down a little more so you can see it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I have a... um, we do have a, a few questions. That was great. Thank you so much. So many things. Yes. <laughs> and we have lots of questions. A lot of comments. Your library sounds wonderful. Um, you're well deserving, definitely, of being the best small library with so many um programs and events and things you do. Um, and I think a lot of these are a lot of things that, that many, many libraries do. Some of these things we had presentations about earlier today, uh, memory yes. project and after food programs. And um, there's just so many things that all of us are doing, um, but you're doing so much with your community. And I think like you've been mentioning, being so far away from anything else, it is, um, you that, are- that's so, Yeah, that's what yeah. Yeah, that's why we're so honored to have been chosen because all small libraries are playing a vital role in their communities. So I, we know that it's all small libraries, but we were we're we're lucky to be the ones chosen. <laughs> mm -hmm, absolutely. Um, so I do want to answer have a, a couple of questions here. We will go a little bit into the four o'clock hour. Our next presenter is here and ready to go, but um, we don't have anything after that. We have just have our, our um, last session. So um, I do want to get a few questions out for you. Um, uh, someone just want to know um, the beehives. Do you have beehives in your library rooftop or somewhere for people to see? How does that all? So the beehives is our, our senior center home. Sorry. Uh, okay. So there are senior center homes, but we do have beehives outside our. <laughs> Unwanted beehives. Yeah, but the, they're, they're beehives. It's called beehives, and it's our senior homes that we go into and do story times and crafts. Okay. Okay. 
Um, you mentioned grants a lot, and so there are questions um, about that, of course. Um, that obviously as much as a lot of money um and that to do all of these things um how do you how have you been able to do this have the time to develop write the grants um what is your what is your budget to start with actually and, and how much are you getting grant wise if you know okay so uh, so our operating budget and our um our operating budget and our personnel are all paid through the city and some county funds everything else that we do all the other programs we do are grant funded or fund it through the um, businesses that they'll fund stuff for us. So all these programs are grant funded. And yes, I write a lot of grants. A lot of my time is spent writing grants. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just part of the job, I guess. It's just what you have to do if you want to do these things. Yeah, yep. it's part of being library director. Does anyone else help you with this or is it pretty much your? Um, I'm going to be coaching other people how to do them. But right now it's currently me. Great, great. Um, let's see. So the movies that you did outdoors, your outdoor movies on the okay. screen there, um, how do you handle the licensing for that? Someone wants to know. Yeah, that's very expensive. And that's where uh, businesses come in to help us pay for those. So each movie costs us anywhere from 450 to $550 to do. So we have to buy a license every movie we do outdoors. So you do it individually for each one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, I know that varies across the country here, here in Nebraska, we, um, through the library commission we have funding through the through the state that covers the motion picture licensing for libraries here they just they do have to sign up with us for it right oh that's nice that, yeah. that would save us a lot of money <laughs> yeah. um let's see someone loved your video they're playing theirs for this upcoming summer so i'm sure everybody's gonna be excited to see what your next one's gonna be no pressure there <laughs> <laughs> um oh i did that uh, um let's see uh if, if um and do you have is somewhere on the slides here do you have your contact info or is that on yeah. one of them or oh, do libraries do. just reach out to you through the website yeah there we go yes okay so um so is there, so there is debbie and sarah's contact info for anyone who you don't get to all your questions i don't want to run too much into the next um session um oh Good clarification. Someone just clarify for me, and that's true. Our the movie license that we have through Nebraska does not cover doing things outside. So that is, you know, it's in you know, in the building. Okay, um, that, we buy that also, so we can show movies inside the library. So that's more affordable than the outside one. So yeah, so so it's just so so if you don't want, so we do have the movie licensing thing here, but it, you have to do it in you know in your meeting room or indoors somewhere, not one of the big screen ones outside. Um, I, I do I do have a small screen movie theater for outside. The first person that emails me and wants it, I will email it to them. <laughs> hey, anybody wants one of the screens? That's a, that's a smaller version, but it's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> they will work with them on getting it shipped to you, yeah. Um, so if you have other questions about any of their programs, uh, definitely reach out to uh, Debbie and um, Sierra. So uh, thank you so much, um, both of you. I am sorry about the, the, the snafu this morning. That was totally my, my, my bad with the the time zones I, I do this every year and i you know sometime you know after maybe well, 13 years things are going to get a little you know messed up sometimes i guess <laughs> thank you for having us yes yes it was great to hear from you congratulations i think you've done some great work here obviously lots and lots of ideas for other libraries for anyone who did questions we didn't get to i'm sorry definitely reach out to debbie and sarah i'm sure they'd be happy to chat with you about all the different programs um that they are doing there yeah. um yeah um, hey, have to, yeah, so what is your um, annual budget each year that you get? Do you know how much? What is your, our what? Your budget, your annual budget? It's um, 500000 something. I, I'm not, no offhand, yeah. And that's most, like I said, most of it is probably 90% of it is personnel. And then Salary. the 10% is. Enough. is How many staff do you have there? I have nine. Nine, okay. And, and you're... Um, FD population there is only about 7,500 for the, yeah, so that's not, a, yeah, that's small. All right. Great. Thank you so much. All right. Okay. And I hope we'll see more from you all.